welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Eh, hello my duckies, I'm Quick J Horsethroat, and you know what was really bad? 2014, it was a fucking awful year for games, and here are 10 reasons why. Now for this list, we'll keep exactly the same rules from my top 10 favourite games of 2014, so let's not waste any time and get straight to the rightful sacrifice of my personal worst games of 2014. Cure. <gasps> you know what, I agree with Progerid on this front. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes is an incredible game, but it honestly shouldn't exist whatsoever. I can't say much else about it. It controls incredibly, looks incredible, plays incredibly, but for the price that it's retailed for, it's actually kind of unforgivable. The main game itself lasts about 90 minutes, and what's worse is that absolutely nothing happens of any major interest to the Metal Gear lore in those 90 minutes, minus the ending where everything you did in Peace Walker gets destroyed. You can argue that there's other things to do, yes, but all that does is pad out the bare bones campaign to show you everything that Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain will be, which basically says to me that this is simply a tech demo and nothing more. A tech demo with a heftier price tag than most games that leave 20 times more of an impact. And the fact that the amazing PT was released, again, by Hideo Kojima, but I got more out of it, more replayability, and it was free, says to me that Kojima might think that dedicated MGS fans will buy anything at any price just for the name on the box. This game rocks, but yes, it shouldn't exist. <gasps> oh, how the mighty have fallen. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was released alongside the honestly not very good movie, so my expectations weren't that high to begin with, but goddammit, this game didn't even meet those expectations. The double-trigger web swinging may be fucking awesome, but everything else feels so damn rushed and by the numbers for a Spider-Man game. Which is a shame, because all they needed to do was a next-gen update on the PS2 Spider-Man 2, and voila, that would have been a much better game. In this, though, the controls are clunky and oversensitive, making any kind of parkour next to impossible. The crimes that you fight feel meaningless, cookie cutter and a simple excuse to make travelling around the city easier, the models and textures are literally straight off of an early Xbox 360 title, and despite that fact of the low graphic intensity, the game runs up complete shit from start to finish, glitching up in frame rate dropping on any system that you play it on. The hundreds of awesome characters, boss fights and occasional fun missions stop this from being any lower on the list, but it still doesn't excuse this soulless and pointless attempt of a Spider-Man game. <gasps> Assassin's Creed Unity. I've tried to play this game. I really have, I promise you. But I haven't got any more than three hours into it because of how unstable and broken it is. So all I have to say to Ubisoft is fix your fucking games before you fucking release them at retail price and persuade everyone to fucking pre-order it and tell everyone that they have to buy more fucking shit with microtransactions, you magic fucking asshole ca <gasps> Daylight was a pretty shameless attempt at being a horror game by just being a blatant slender clone that is even more predictable and jump scare heavy. The only difference being is that you're in a lab and it costs you a fair bit of money. Granted, there are things I like about this game, like the use of darkness, the sound design, and the awesome light effects, but if the pickup item here and drop it off here gameplay didn't bore you, then maybe the identical environments and maze-like level design will bore you and confuse you. Throw that in with a confusing and ridiculous plot that tries to scare you and make you feel sympathetic over bland stereotype characters, and you have a jolly old time. Oh, and the game may look pretty damn good, but the load times, save times, and the way the game runs and constantly drops with frames puts you off far too much to even care. <gasps> Can we just forget that Rambo even exists? When I first heard about this game, I thought it was going to be like the extremely fun and ridiculous Rambo arcade game, but instead we get something somewhat similar, but somehow even more simplistic and boring. I can start off by saying that arcade rail shooters are a guilty pleasure of mine, but even this barely scrapes the bottom of the barrel that is my pleasure. Quick time and point and shoot, that is all you're doing in this entire game, but it isn't fun, cheesy, and challenging like House of the Dead, not as engaging as Time Crisis, and all you get is an awfully cheap and tacky PS2 looking retelling of First Blood, complete with sound bites that sound like they came from a degraded VHS copy of the movie. Then you sprinkle in the unresponsive and flat sensations and zero feedback shooting of everybody without the arcade cup and its fucking vibrating machine gun. And this ends up just becoming the worst rail shooter I've ever played. <gasps> what even happens here? I know the Sonic team had little to no involvement with developing this game, but Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric basically proves to me that Sega have not learned a single solitary fucking thing from past failures on the Sonic franchise. And like Ground Zeroes, this also tells me that they also know how dedicated and ruthless the Sonic fanbase is, and that they will pay for absolutely anything and defend it on their behalf. Look, it's simple. This game is outright unfinished. Its frame rate is fucked beyond belief. Its visuals are unpolished and straight out of an early PS2 title. That seems to be a theme in this list, actually. There are glitches up the wazoo, and even if that shit was fixed and it wasn't in this game, the gameplay is worthless enough on its own anyway. Uninspired platforming set segments, uninspired temple run style speed segments, and awful, awful combat mechanics with absolutely no depth, no satisfying fighting feedback, and no modable combos. And when that is a huge part of your game, you gone done and majorly fucked it up. Bayonetta 2, this really isn't. Also because in Bayonetta 2, everyone can at least shut the fuck up every so often and not talk about bounce pads and rings! Also, the music is bland and forgettable, and who the fuck is Lyric anyway? Lyric is the dumbest Christing name I've ever heard for a bad guy in any game ever, and who gives a goddamn shit who Lyric is anyway? He's a robot snake called Lyric? Why? <gasps> Sonic Boom may be terrible, but Murdered Soul Suspect was more than just a bad game for me. It was a disappointment to me. A major disappointment, especially for how cool it looked. Even though I love the visual style and quality in the writing with the diary entries everywhere, everything else in this game is just bad. Being a ghost in this game means that you can walk through walls, which makes every map extremely confusing and disorientating to navigate. Oh, and you can't walk through every wall as well. You know, that just, that just makes too much sense. And that's not even mentioning the fact that this is one of the easiest games in the world because it practically plays itself. You're a detective, yes, but you don't do any detective work. You don't solve your own puzzles, you don't crack your own cases, you don't work your way around the plot with your own skill. You literally you just walk around, pick up clues, and then when you found enough of them, the rest of the game just pretty much does everything for you. Even if you make a mistake with putting the pieces together, the game doesn't punish you for it, so what the fuck's the point? There's absolutely no fail state in this game apart from if you get caught by demons in the horrendously flat and pathetically easy stealth sections, or broken escort missions that can have your escort get spotted multiple times just as long as you've distracted the right guard at the right time. I want to murder murdered, and murder deserves murdering, so I'll be murdering murdered once I murder it. <gasps> dungeon Keeper Mobile. Before I continue, I'll just say that I haven't fully played any of the classic Dungeon Keeper games, but I've seen a fair bit of them and played a bit of them myself to understand why people regard them as classics. But even with my inexperience with 
Dungeon Keeper that honestly doesn't matter because of how obviously rancid this game is. This game is literally a money pit for EA's customers to dump into. That is fucking literally it. It's a free game, but it isn't free to wait. No, because those kinds of games at least give you chances to replay after a few minutes or hours. This is free to wait for days, days, weeks, months in order to get the full mobile experience. Or, you know, if you can't wait that long, you could just give them more fucking money because that's literally the only way to progress in this game. I think I speak for everyone when I say fuck this system of microtransactions in mobile games. There are free mobile games out there that exist that are at least fun and not impossible and don't punish you for not investing your own countless amounts of cash into the game. You know, it may be a little bit trickier without doing that, but you can still play the game for free and have fun with it despite the occasional wait period. This game, though, is literally ungodly with its attempts at sucking money out of you. It forces you. And that is the worst offense that any mobile game could do, especially from a huge company like EA. And the fact that this game isn't anything special in the first place just makes it fucking worse. If you're gonna do this kind of system in your free mobile game, at least improve the fucking wait system or actually charge a set price for it. But then I wouldn't be happy with putting a proper price to this on my mobile anyway, because if I can play Max Payne 1 on my mobile, which will cost me less than my lunch, why the fuck would I invest any more money into a pretty lackluster game in the first place made by a huge and often terrible company like EA? Such arrogance, such greed, and such shite. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> this game, this game, this game costs real money. <laughs> oh, it isn't on Steam anymore. Good. <gasps> It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize how terrible and lazy Slaughtering Grounds is as a game, but what's weird is that it may not look like the worst game on this list. Sure, the awfully pixelated white outline Google image search blood, the fact that you can't pick up ammo to the guns that you aren't holding, and the fact that there's no creative consistency or context for any of the map existing whatsoever, and it's just stock assets thrown into an arena with a short and constantly looping shitty piece of music are many, many reasons why this game is unplayable. But this game makes number one, like many other people's top 10 worst list of 2014, because of the utterly rank, appalling, and unforgivable behavior of the developers that reacted to the negative feedback of this game. Ridiculing internet reviewers and calling them names, running competitions on forums telling people that negative reviews get them free download codes only to then ban anyone that left negative feedback and the nail on the coffin issuing copyright takedown notices on anyone that says their game is shit, which it rightfully is. The reason this game makes number one is because the message needs to be loudly proclaimed and shouted clearly. Do not support devs like this. Do not get this game just to see how bad it is because it isn't even worth that. Make sure that horrid excuses of game companies like this can never make another game again by spreading the word on their actions and never even looking at their games out of curiosity. Look, we're all human and I understand that a lot of time, effort, work and blood and sweat and tears goes into making a game, but that gives nobody any excuse to treat the consumers, you know, the people that you're trying to sell your games to, like this. And and this shit has to stop right this second. And all I'll say is that you should go in the description and watch Jim Sterling's experience through the whole fiasco and you'll see exactly what I mean. <sighs> and there you have it everyone, my top 10 personal worst games of 2014. Now obviously, this was only my list, so as always, leave all of your comments in the comment box and tell me all of your worst games that you played in 2014. And I can only hope that 2015's worst games list won't be anywhere near as easy to make as 2014's. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. Tara. Cure. Hello there everybody and thanks so much for watching my kind of late, I'm sorry but I had a retrospective going on, top 10 worst games of 2014. Hope you enjoyed it in the current quickies format, I might make this a yearly thing now. Um, yeah, well if you like this video then please show your support by liking this video and maybe subscribing to my channel because you have no idea how much that helps me out on YouTube, it helps me out a huge amount so if you could do that that would be fantastically kind of you and I'd be forever grateful, thank you. And if you go in the description you'll find all of my social medias, my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch and all the these other stuffs and even my games grabber collection so if you want to see what games are on my shelf right this second updated on a daily basis then just go into the description and find the games grabber link and then you'll see everything on my collection and maybe buy some of the games yourself that would be pretty cool and hey look there are three other videos here so you can click on any of the slates to go straight to them and I'd also like to take this time to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to my top patreon supporters so you guys thank you so much Nicole Gunara, Ahmed Al Mutawa, Tony Pierce, Ivan Strand, Alan Angert, Greg Black Benjamin Peasley, James Newman, Kylie McKinnon, Ferocious Toaster, and Travis McCollum. Thank each and every one of you, and thank everyone at home for watching this video. If it is your birthday today or watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.